everybody welcome back to the channel i just finished watching killer sally on netflix it is about the life of a bodybuilder who was sentenced to 26 years in prison for killing her husband who was abusive and when i tell you that this story was so heartbreaking because of the injustice that occurred in her case. It was a murder committed on Valentine's Day, which makes it even more heartbreaking. Um, but the trauma that she endured and that her children endured at the hands of her late husband, it was horrific. And she was failed by not only the judicial system, but just it seems like everyone around her. So let's start at the beginning, okay? The bodybuilder, the lady on the right, her name is Sally McNeil. And she, again, like I said, she, you know, served 26 years in prison for killing her husband, who was extremely abusive. So they were both bodybuilders and they were in the Marine Corps, and that's how they met. So uh, she had two children by her first husband, and her children are beautiful, John and Shantina, who were just nine and 12 years old when their mother was locked up, incarcerated. Um, but she divorced her first husband. He was also abusive, and he was also a Marine. And it just seems like, you know, there is this pattern of trauma and abuse throughout her whole life. You know, she said when she grew up, her parents were abusive, they were alcoholics. And she began to lift weights as a way to, as a coping mechanism to deal with that trauma and to protect herself basically from all the abuses she suffered growing up, which is understandable. So she went into the Marine Corps after being um, a fairly successful athlete all throughout high school. And she was a, a diver, swimmer, track star. And after she divorced her first husband, she met Ray McNeil, who is the man on the right. And like I said, they, they both started out as amateur bodybuilders. And then as they grew more competitive, they ended up getting more into that lifestyle. So, you know, like their diet was really important. She said that she fed him. She said she would go to Costco and get like the big things of steak that had like eight in a pack. And her and her two children would have, you know, one a piece. And then, so that's three, and then, you know, five would be set aside for Ray. And that he would eat, like, 144 eggs in a week or some crazy astronomical expensive diet that he took the bulk of. Like, he was portrayed, because, you know, he's not alive, but from what her testimony was, her children's testimony, this man was extremely abusive to not only her, but to her kids. And that's what really broke my heart. Um, there was footage of them, even on Christmas, opening up their Christmas gifts as, as kids. And he was talking about, you know, the belt and, and, and spanking them and beating them. It was just really horrific. And, uh, she would, she would tell about how, you know, he would choke her repeatedly throughout the years. And the best friend on the right, DJ Jeffers, was trash. <laughs> and the reason why I say that he was trash or the things that he contributed to the film, to me, were trash because he talked about his friend, his late friend, Ray McNeil. And he said that he saw him literally take his fingers and put them in someone's eye socket 
when they were working as bouncers at a club. And he literally blinded this person with his bare hands. Like that's how strong he was. He was, you know, on steroids. And after seeing him physically maim and harm and blind someone, on the other side, he said that, you know, Ray McNeil was a gentle giant and just, he tried to portray him as this meek, you know, person who would never harm anyone. But I'm like, dude, you just saw him blind someone with your own hands. Like, you know, the propensity for harm and how abusive he was, not only to people that he was supposed to be bouncing out of the club, but also to his family, his wife and children who were vulnerable at the time. When you're hopped up on steroids, I mean, not only does it make you physically bigger, and as you guys can see from the pictures, he was extremely muscular, but it changes your personality, right? So there is this rage and violet streak and, you know, the, the things that it does to your hormones are ridiculous. So I take his best friend's testimony with a grain of salt, but I feel like he failed Sally. So that's why I chose to include him in this video because he was another person who knew what was going on behind the scenes, but failed to intervene or step in or advocate for her or her kids. So this is her son, John, who just broke my heart because this handsome young man went into the Marine Corps and he said that he toured Iraq, I believe it was five times. And, you know, he said he, he couldn't even see his mom after she got out because he was going through his own trauma, dealing with trauma that he experienced as a child and through the Marine Corps. And he was in and out of um, drug rehabilitation programs. And he said that he, you know, um, had issues with his own personal family, his wife. And uh, I believe he has a child, but he said that, you know, he, they were no longer together. He was just really open and transparent about that they didn't let him testify when he was a child or at her trial, which he should have, because listening to him and his sister Shantina's testimony about how abusive Ray McNeil was to their mother and to them growing up would have been so strong um, in their mother's favor. And, you know, they tried to say that she didn't have battered woman syndrome, which is impossible because i mean ray was abusive to not only her but also her kids for years and you know he said that he wished that he had a chance to testify on behalf of his mother they didn't even want to hear what the kids had to say and you know he was nine and his sister was 12. so yeah they were young but they weren't that young to where they couldn't have told the truth on record so he said that he was really dealing with that past trauma and you would just tell like this listening to him and his sister talk um his sister also has a son and they did go visit sally when she got out but um she was also in an abusive relationship and so it just that heartbreaking cycle of trauma just repeated itself this is the lawyer and Dan Goldstein, who is, I believe, a judge right now, but he would say things like, you know, she wasn't a real woman and just really attacked her humanity. So I just don't feel like she got a fair trial. I feel like, you know, she was railroaded. She's out now. She got married. So I'm so grateful for that. But. You guys check it out. Let me know what you think in the comments and I will talk to you lovely people later. Take care. Bye.